Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Zanotti, and welcome to Lectora Live, your inside track into Lectora. Well, you know, Lectora has been evolving quite a bit throughout the last few years with the new interface and a lot of new features and just a ton of new functionality. And one of the things that they're doing is they're also including third-party developers now. You've seen in our last episode, we talked a little bit about the eLearning Brothers and their interface. Well, today we have with us Sergey Snegorov, who developed a product called Branch Track. And Branch Track allows you to do interactive scenarios and simulations right within Lectora using his tool. And we've got him here today, so stay tuned. Here he comes. <laughs> Sergey, how are you today? Hi, Rick. Uh, perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm really good. Thanks for having me on the show. No, and I appreciate it. I know you flew in very late back home to where you are. It's, it's pretty late your time. It's, it's about 10 hours later than we are here, and it's 1 o'clock, about 1.15 over here. So thank you for coming in on the later side. We really appreciate that. Now, Sergey, you are one of, you're considered one of the, the, the premier partners with Lectora in terms of developing for Lectora and creating a tool that can work with many authoring tools, but specifically it works very well with Lectora. How did you, how did you, well, one, get into developing your tool, Branch Track, and uh, how did that all come about? Well, um, I used to run an e-learning company for about six years, and we did a lot of work for banks, especially retail banking, insurance companies, and uh, one of the best ways to train people to actually sell their products was to develop, uh, develop interactive customer simulations. But uh, we always struggled with it because uh, like traditional authoring tools are not very well uh, suited for building something that is branching and non-linear as opposed to this classic linear courses. So um, we ended up uh, developing our own tool which allowed us to build quickly this, uh, what we call flight simulation for salespeople, mm. uh, these interactions that uh, allow you to train your sales skills. So uh, it was out of necessity first, and then we decided to uh, give it to everyone else in the market. And, and you've done something really unique because not only have you built the tool, but it's web-based, so it's real easy for anyone anywhere to get to it, and, um, and that just makes it very powerful. You also incorporate it so it can work with Lectora, it can work with Adobe Captivate storyline, uh, and it can run standalone, pretty much. Yes, um, uh, the editor itself is uh, in the cloud. I think pretty much every tool will eventually move uh, to a software as a service model. Mm -hmm. And uh, the output is pure HTML, so it works well with any tool that can incorporate uh, HTML content. And obviously, Lectora is uh, natively and entirely HTML, mm -hmm. so uh, it works great with Lectora as well. So I have to ask you, how did you wind up getting involved with Lectora uh, as an authoring tool and with them as a company? <laughs> well, uh, that's, uh, that's a funny story. Um, it was uh, about seven years ago, and it was uh, about 2008, you know, crisis everywhere, and we just started an e-learning development company. And when I was calling people on the phone, some of them would just uh, hang up on me because, you know, the budgets were decimated. Nobody wanted to hear another salesperson trying to sell them something. And uh, we ended up... Uh, doing the research instead of uh, sales calls. We uh, would call people and say, look, do you want to be on the panel as an expert? We would interview you uh, for the greater good and pretty much everyone wants to be an expert when you ask them. Uh, you know it best, you've done like a million interviews uh, uh, with people, everyone wants to be in an interview. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's a great sales technique. So uh, we weren't even nearly finished with uh, interviewing all the people, but uh, one of those big companies called us and said, well, uh, do you know Victoria? And I go, well, sure I do. And all while Googling for uh, what's Victoria? Is it a tool? <laughs> Is it a person? And, uh, well, it turned out to be a tool, and they wanted to build a course. So uh, they sent us this uh, half page from their uh, manual on uh, dress code within the company mm. and asked us to build a sample course, like maybe a couple of slides on, on dress code within the company using Lectora. So we got the trial, and we started building it, and uh, we actually ended up... Uh, 
uh, getting that contract with that huge company beating some seven or eight companies because and uh, that still fascinates me like seven years later we were the only company and we were mind you in the business for like literally two weeks at that moment uh, the only company that decided to make the course adaptive. So on the first slide we asked, well, are you a back office employee or are you at the front desk? And based on that, we, we gave them different content because the dress code is obviously different. And somehow we were the only company who decided to do that. So we got that contract and this is how we got into e-learning. This is how we got acquainted with Lictor and how this wonderful journey has started, essentially. That's great. It's what we call kismet. It just happened. It worked. It, everything was good. And uh, and they're a really good company. They're good to work with, and and they have a good product. So it was it was a good choice. Um, now, Branch Track, it, actually, I, you've shown me demos of it, and and um, just to be clear for everybody who's viewing, we also want to become a reseller. So we'll be working together and partnering with you. I was really impressed with what you did, and and really the ease of use with which it works. Um, Do you want me to show it? Sure. Would you like to? That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me share my screen in Skype. And while he's doing that, it is it is a really nice tool because being web based, you can literally wherever you are, you can just access it. In fact, here he is. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, you were saying. Uh, yeah, I really like the the fact that it is web based because it makes development wherever you are really simple. You could access from your desktop, from your laptop, if you're on the road, if you need to catch up on something, if you need to make any small changes, you don't have to be at your office doing that. You can do it anywhere and it will reflect back afterwards. What I personally like is that uh, when you have a cloud based tool, you can use it on Mac and on PC. True. And, you know, you don't have that many authoring tools who run well on Mac. No, that's true. So there's there's Branch Track, there's Lector Online, and a few others. So mm -hmm. I, I like that it's platform independent. Um, okay, so the demo. The if you've ever built uh, a course that uh, deals with. Uh, service skills, uh, sales skills, or any human interaction. If you've ever mm -hmm. trained people who have to talk to other people as part of their job, you probably wanted to simulate one of those situations. And uh, we've done a lot of these simulations, and uh, we compressed the best of that know-how into, into branch track. So the simulation would look something like that. So you would have a customer uh, that would challenge you. Uh, they would ask you something and you would have your choices. We have three choices here and depending on what we choose, the dialogue will go into very different directions. So let's try number one. All right, so uh, she clearly has a problem. She has been overcharged on her card. It's a banking situation. She's not very happy we have this awesome mood meter to indicate that you know, the class is half full at this moment. And uh, based on uh, what we say next, we'll see uh, the situation developing and we'll see different choices. Let's try that. All right, so we are obviously diffusing the situation. Uh, let's let's dive in. And every time the learner makes a choice, the situation develops uh, in some unpredictable way. And mm -hmm. they have to put everything they've read in those 50 slides we've probably uh, dumped on them before into practice. This bridges this gap between theoretical knowledge, reading from slides, and actual performance. Uh, pretty much like flight simulation, so they can mm -hmm. practice in a safe environment. So uh, the cool part is actually is, is not this. You could probably build that in Lectora alone by just putting a few of those awesome e-learning brothers people on the slide couple of their backgrounds, mm -hmm. uh, a few text boxes and so on. But you would probably end up with a million pages that are really hard to uh, understand where everything goes because they're all in chapters mm -hmm. going one after another. What we have is, is this. This is what powers this simulation and it's uh, entirely in the browser. You can see the whole flow chart, the mm -hmm. whole decision tree of that scenario. And it's easy to understand what's happening in every scene, where everything goes, how the situation develops. And editing the content is super easy. Let me show you. Yeah, and also it's, you know, the, the whole flowchart approach for simulations and this kind of branching makes it so much easier. 
It's, it's hard for most people to visualize a simple storyboard, least of all branching interactions. Absolutely. Uh, we, we always struggled with the fact that uh, the branching scenario ends up on the whiteboard and you can't really communicate a whiteboard to your customer properly. And uh, if you try to build something like that in Excel, then uh, you still have this gap between having script in one place and the actual interaction developed in a tool in another place. So every time something changes in the script, you have to run to the developers and uh, ask them to change. And you do that enough times, you end up with broken links, with content that wasn't supposed to be there. It becomes a pretty expensive pretty quickly so well, I noticed uh, also you just zoomed out so you could see more of the the interaction as you go so you can zoom in and zoom out yes and uh, even collaborating with customers is, is very easy because they can leave comments if you share that simulation mm -hmm. with your uh, subject matter expert for example they can leave comments right here in the tree typically when you send them a course you uh, end up getting like a 40 megabyte uh, Word document with screenshots mm. and spend more time trying to understand where the screenshot belongs in your course uh, rather than fixing the actual typo that they right. found. And uh, you need some system to kind of uh, help you with that. In case of Lectora, you have review link mm -hmm. and in case of branch track, well, this thing is built right into it. So you can uh, click on this comment in here, you can see what the guy says. Well, obviously, I'm, I'm talking to myself here and you know, I'm asking to uh, add more reply choices and I can engage into this conversation and say mm -hmm. no. And this is pretty cool because everyone who's commenting is on the same page, literally. And uh, as a developer, you have a less chance of ending up between two subject matter experts uh, arguing and uh, asking you mutually exclusive things. You know, well, also, uh, also, in indirect conversation. and also internally, if you have developers, let's say, who are actually writing the e-learning course or, or developing the branch track, then in essence, you could have the subject matter expert or the instructional designer telling the developers, I need more interactions, or I need this, change the color of that. So that could all be done through the review. Precisely. Method. Yes, okay. yes. Nice. and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great time saver. And we've designed the whole tool for maximum user friendliness. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, uh, I can honestly say that we're probably one of the easiest to pick up tools on the market, especially given the very complex subject uh, area we're in the branching scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they seem daunting, but with branch track, it's really easy. You just click, you explain uh, whatever the customer is saying, what your options are, you drag that option out and you create a new branch just like that. Okay. And you know, you can, <coughs> you, it's, it's like putting a post-it on the wall. Mm -hmm. You have your post-it, you have your thread a uh, whole new branch developing right here and it's all uh, live right in the browser uh, every after you've created your simulation and play tested it with your uh, colleagues you can uh, select one of the characters you can uh, uh, these are all the learning brothers guys and i can't uh, uh, stop saying how awesome the characters by elon brothers are and it's very cool that now they are part of lectora package and so you can upload your own. So I, I have uploaded uh, a few characters and a few backgrounds on of my own. And uh, I'll demo it to you in a sec. So uh, if you've ever used GoAnimate, you'll probably recognize this girl. So uh, you can match <coughs> other tools as well. So uh, we've taken a few screenshots from GoAnimate. Mm -hmm. We've uh, uh, created the character based on their uh, footage and you can even Im import the whole footage from GoAnimate so you can make a branching movie if you like mm. um, just as easily as uh, building anything else in branch track. So it's it's pretty cool and we are trying to save your time at every step along the way. And like you said you can use pictures or you can also use videos correct? Yes you can add voiceover you can uh, add videos because Today, producing videos is pretty easy. Uh, you can just grab your iPhone and uh, shoot a decent movie clip in, in a few minutes. Uh, even uh, working with professional companies uh, is becoming cheaper. You have tools like GoAnimate and all those uh, whiteboard animation tools and so on and so on. But the problem is that the video is always linear. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to make it interactive, not like TV, but you know, to <coughs> engage your learners, you have to use... Uh, Track, hopefully. So in, in Lectora, does this show up as 
one page inside of Latora? Uh, when you export uh, uh, the content of BrainStrack, you have essentially two options. First of all, you can just grab a link. Mm -hmm. Click on Deliver, and there's the embeddable link. Uh, and uh, you can go to Lectora. Let me just... Uh, let me just fire up Lectora, and you can insert a web window. Okay. And paste the link. It creates this little web window. Let's resize it properly, like that, full page. And let's see if it works. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. it it's just that's too hard. That's too hard, sir. I mean, that's just way too hard. <laughs> no, it's. Well, that's actually it's very like, easy. That's because a lot of people get afraid when they hear web link. It's really easy. Yeah, you just copy and paste, and you know, uh, they say that copying and pasting is like bread and butter of a New York developer. <laughs> so, it's uh, business as usual. You just copy a link, paste it into Lectora, and you have it running on the Lectora page right now. You can see that it's being <coughs> okay. on Lectora. Uh, and in this case, that's running from your servers where it's hosted, correct? Yes, it's running live, and it's great for debugging. So, for example, you're working, uh, you deliver the course to the LMS, and you have to change one little thing. You don't have to re-deliver, like re-download, upload to the client okay. elements, and so on. You can just fix it online uh, very quickly. But if you're worried about uh, bandwidth, or you're delivering it offline on a flash thumb drive, or something like that, you can actually use another method. You can go to branch track. You can click on... Uh, Lectora library object, and I'm proud to say that we are the first ever company to integrate with Lectora on that level, uh, whereas we can produce a real Lectora library object, just like Lectora. Same yeah, congratulations. Thing, same everything. Uh, I know that the Learning Brothers library integration uses the same method now, mm -hmm. but we're number one. So uh, let's go back to Lectora. Let's find a clear page, see what we've uh, just downloaded. Is it here? Yep. So it's the AWO, and if you're interested in what uh, AWO stands for, you should watch the previous episode of the show. I watched, I know. <laughs> so I just, if you noticed, I just dropped the AWO on the page, and it uh, uh, resized to the correct size. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it even calls it a branch track simulation with the unique ID of that simulation. <laughs> on the page, all the files have been downloaded and integrated into Lectora attached to the title. So we try to run it, and what happens? And AWO was an Athena web object, correct? Yes, Athena. Yeah. The, Athena, the original uh, name. Yeah, the original name for Lectora. I was, I was uh, uh, pretty surprised to see that uh, uh, Lectora wasn't always Lectora. That was, yeah, uh, same here. I, I never knew. Yep. Um, Frank, yep, there we, uh, there we are. So we generated this preview page from uh, uh, Lectora, and all the files and images are right here. So um, uh, you can publish the whole thing, upload to your learning management system, and it will store every file on your LMS. So mm -hmm. there is no ties to brainstrike.com. That's, that's really nice. It's yeah. it's one of the enterprise options because it kind of uh, it's it's like a site license. So yeah, you can't oh, that's great. What to do with it, but uh, if you want to go for it, by all means, the uh, opportunity is there. Yeah, that's a very nice feature. Yeah. So. Uh, not only that, uh, by the way, if you work in Lectora, you can uh, enable BrainStrack to actually pass the score and completion status from the simulation mm -hmm. into a Lectora variable. And then uh, you can use that variable in a conditional action to provide <coughs> feedback that you build yourself within uh, the course. Or you can lock navigation, for example, uh, and, and unlock it only conditionally when the learner completes the branching simulation. You know, that's one, of, that's one of the beauties of Lectora, too, that dealing with variables and dealing with things that are being shared, it's one of the easiest tools, if not the easiest, to actually work across different environments and retain the, the scores, the, the, the variables that you have. And it works actually very, very well. Uh, we've done that many times where we've had to, you know, not all MSs work well or work the same way. So we've often had to go in and change some of the, the LMS variables to work correctly. And with Lectora, it's, it's the easiest. We haven't had anything that easy 
um, and it always works. So that's that's one of the uh, the key features, and and it's nice because with your tool, then you can pass all of those variables or scores or whatever else into Lector, and then you can manipulate it as needed to get into whatever LMS that they have. Yes, precisely. And uh, what I like about Lector is that it's so transparent. It doesn't try to obfuscate the code. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very developer friendly. <coughs> yep. So. Um, yep. And you know, with browsers and learning management systems as they are, you always have to kind of hack a little bit around sure. certain things. And uh, with many other tools, it's really difficult to do, especially if they're flash-based. With Lectura, it's uh, it's easy. So if you're in a pinch, you can just uh, edit the page in Notepad and get what you want. In the okay. Page. Now I'm sure because this is an object within Lectura, if they're running Course Mill, this pretty much works seamlessly with Course Mill. Yes, uh, it's um, I I would call it LMS agnostic. So okay. Brainstrike doesn't care what LMS you run mm -hmm. as long as the tool is supportive of uh, third-party HTML content. Okay. And uh, just to you know, for uh, just as an imperity, you can do the same with Storyline and Captivate. Mm -hmm. Uh, even setting variables is uh, possible in those tools, but uh, we did find some quirks when running, for example, a Captivate course on an iPad with BrainStrike embedded. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't always work as as we would like to. Really not our fault. Really not our fault. Right. Victoria never <coughs> had. Yeah. If this look good now. Any other features you want to talk about regarding uh, branch track so that people kind of get a better feel for how it runs and, and what it does? Yeah, so um, in branch track, everything is uh, designed, as I mentioned, for maximum simplicity. Mm -hmm. So uh, we try to kind of take as little of your time as possible, but then we do not take the power away from you. So, for example, if you just click on a card, it opens to reveal this basic text, but you can. Uh, Go to the, into the full screen mode, and you see this uh, full view of uh, of the content you're building. You can set the emotions for all the characters between happy and angry, mm -hmm. and so regardless of what character you use, every character will display the corresponding emotion. So in our character library, all of these guys they have the five emotions. So it so automatically it changes their states as you go. Exactly. Okay. And uh, one of the Little but very cool features is that we have face detection built in. So uh, mm. the speech bubbles, they never overlap faces. So if someone is slanted a little bit to the right like this guy, and then you take someone who is uh, tilting their head to the left like this guy, you can see how the bubble moves away. To <laughs> Clever. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And it's especially important when you put the uh, brain track content into a very tight spot you know mm -hmm. on, on the slide you have a lot of things going on you have t table of contents and menu and navigation so you don't have uh, uh, as much space as we would prefer so branch track is actually uh, responsive so uh, um, let me demonstrate so this is the embeddable view that you would see on the, on, on the lectora slide and uh, if you minimize it you can see how it responds, you know, fonts change, the mm -hmm. layout changes a little bit, um, and there is never a scroll bar, so it's always visible. You can go to a very small size of the whole thing. It's, uh, it's less than a typical phone today, <laughs> and, uh, and it still works and tries to uh, adjust to, to the space you provide. And I think that responsiveness is one of the most important features of uh, any learning tool, uh, starting today and probably for the mm -hmm. next 10 years. Or so. so, so branch track at this point can work multi platform? Yes, it works uh, multi platform on tablets and phones and uh, PCs and Macs and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, our biggest challenge was actually not getting it to work on an iPad, and it looks great on an iPad, mm -hmm. but get it to work on uh, those older browsers, you know, like Internet Explorer mm -hmm. 8. Mm -hmm. running within some obsolete learning management system that forces it into some compatibility mode and so on and so on. So in BrainStrike, everything is built in HTML, but if uh, we encounter an older browser, uh, there's a flash fallback for media, so uh, voiceovers and, and videos will still play, uh, even on, old, on older browsers. And uh, it's, it's a... Very, it's very important for us to make sure that uh, our users don't think about 
how and where the branch track will be deployed. We okay. make sure that it just works. Now, I had a question for you, a couple of questions that came up um, talking to one of our clients. Can branch track do um, uh, multiple languages? Uh, multiple languages. Uh, In other words, if they want training done, can you um, make it so that it can be developed in certain languages or you can switch a language library out from one language to another or create an XML file or something that can change the um, the captions from, let's say, English to Spanish or English to Russian or English to German, you know, whatever language people are looking for. The process uh, at this point is uh, pretty simple. Uh, it's very easy to duplicate a pro uh, okay. project. So, uh, I'll go to my dashboard. This is the million of projects that I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is our latest. I'll just click duplicate and I have a copy. So uh, then I go in to edit this copied project and uh, I can export a script. And this is just a classic linear script mm -hmm. which you can actually send to a, a translator and uh, uh, you, you can copy it into Word, it will copy just to the normal table, mm -hmm. send it to the translator, it will translate, and then uh, you will have to copy the stuff back. So it's easy to export, but okay. uh, it's, uh, it's not automated for importing all the right. content, at least not yet. We hope to get this feature out okay. uh, this year. Okay, but that's still pretty easy though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like I said, copying and pasting is like what we do every day, so. Okay, and then the other question I had was, can you do, text to speech for all the people that want speech but they don't have the money or budget or abilities to get voiceover talent can you take what they say and use one of the speech engines uh, to actually add the sound to it uh Actually, yes. Um, you probably know that person, uh, Peter Sorensen. He is one of the big lecture experts, mm -hmm. uh, active in the community, uh, speaks at uh, user conferences all the time. He actually built that um, as an experiment for us. He integrated this with uh, a speech engine, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the engine just takes whatever is on screen in Branch Track and reads it. It okay. works like JAWS, like all those screen mm -hmm. readers. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's surprisingly easy because we, like Lictor, we honor the open architecture. And we try to support developers who want to make more with branch track. And um, it's HTML. You don't have to kind of hack a lot to, to get to the content, to integrate other libraries and so on. Uh, now, while uh, I have the script open, I wanted to show this one little thing. On the left column, you can see these file names. And uh, uh, each line in the simulation has its own uh, uh, file name convention. So, for example, this file for hi, I'd like to speak to someone, would be called so1.mp3. Mm -hmm. And if you send this script to your media company, the voiceover artist, uh, they will uh, record everything. They will cut it in little chunks, line by mm -hmm. line and they will name them accordingly to the script. And if, if they send the file names named according to the file name convention, you will be able to upload them to the simulation uh, in bulk. And uh, uh, each file will be automatically added to- Oh, nice right feature. Portion, yeah, right portion of the simulation. It's a huge time saver. So it is. In, in here, we can see that we have what, uh, uh, 13 scenes and we have to go into every scene and click upload so we'll probably have to like click 60 times altogether. Right. Uh, instead we can just upload in bulk and if the files are named according to the script uh, it will uh, happen automatically. So again, That's great. I think uh, I just fell in love a little bit more with the tool because that's a nice feature. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a huge time saver. And we have all these features for one simple reason. We've been building branching scenarios mm -hmm. in different tools, uh, in Lictor, in Captivate, in, uh, I think it was uh, Articulate Presenter 09 back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, and we struggled with lots of these things. So, so you've, been through, you've been through the pain. Exactly. We know the pain we're solving. It. Yeah, that's actually a really good feature. And by the way, here's a tip. If you... Have, if you're in an e-learning department or you're an e-learning developer, this is something that you, know, you work with your voice talent. When, whenever they read, make sure, and this is real important, make sure that they read the slide number or letter or whatever standard you have. Make sure they read it before they read the content of that slide. It will save you a lot of time and grief if they don't. Um, because it, it can be very confusing if you have a long piece. An hour of audio is a lot of audio. 
Even 15, 20 minutes can be a lot of audio. Make sure that they read that. And in branch track, it's even easier because once they read it, then you can actually import according to those slide numbers. So that really will save you a ton of time, effort, and money. And believe me, those are painful things when you have to do it one by one by one by one. Especially, we, especially if you work in uh, languages that, that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Uh, the e-learning company uh, I, I uh, was working at, it's based here in Latvia, in Europe. So we routinely deal with uh, five to seven languages. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to kind of decipher what's going on within the voiceover and the script in English or in Spanish or in uh, any other language that you can potentially understand. But yeah. then you have languages like Finnish and Chinese. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's it's uh, uh, you, you will end up in tears if you want to do that, you know, unless you you're working on a very strict proper yep. process with your company. Yep, um, it's funny. We have some friends from Iceland, and and they sound like Klingons from the Star Trek. Uh, Iceland, Iceland is very similar. In fact, what I read was that Klingon, the language, it was developed based on Icelandic. So it's interesting. I, I can easily believe that. I've never done a course in Iceland. We haven't either. Yeah, and I wish we don't have to, but uh, I, I would imagine it's, it would be one of those languages that are really hard to kind of even compare to the script you have on screen when you listen to it. Yeah. Um, did you want to show anything else? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. And uh, there's not much to branch track. It has a very niche purpose of uh, building awesome branching dialogues and uh, it's very easy to use there's a lot of features but they are all at your fingertips literally yeah. so uh, if uh, you're interested in trying if anyone is interested in, uh, in trying just go to branchtrack.com grab a trial you don't have to the website. put your credit card or anything and uh, play around with it we have a free tier by the way uh, I, I made it a point when uh, we launched this tool that we will always have a free tier for people who want to use it for fun or share with someone else or maybe show it at the conference and, and so on. So we are supportive of, uh, so to say, small guy as well. That sounds great. Do you want to come back and join us? Oh, yes. I entirely forgot I was sharing my screen. Let me see how do I get back. Stop sharing. There you go. Hey, I was, um, I entirely forgot I was sharing my screen. I was uh, using my hands to do all these gestures <laughs> and to be more uh, eloquent, you know, but you know, uh, it's my first uh, interview of this kind on Skype. Oh, good. It wasn't too painful, right? No, not at all. That sounds good. Well, well. You know, this is this is exciting, and it's a fun product, and uh, and I like the flexibility inside the product. And you guys did a great job coming up with the idea for it, as well as the way you implemented it. So that's, uh, I'm sure you're going to do very well in this community in this in this field, because there aren't that many choices um, of software that really does this, or does it either affordably or effectively. Yes, I would say that uh, we are uh, one of the. Uh, recent companies in the market and uh, although there are uh, companies who have been doing uh, branching scenarios for a long time, uh, the software is typically not up to today's standards and also uh, it doesn't play that nicely with other tools and we made sure that we are not trying to force your authoring tools uh, out of your company when, when you buy branch track we want to be yeah. another tool in the toolkit that you already have so regardless of what tool you have if you add branch track you'll just save a lot of development time but you will not have to learn much of anything new and you don't have to abandon your uh, other tools yeah, we that's... pay well with uh, everyone else that sounds great now we were talking earlier at the beginning of the show before we started that that you're in your office right now uh, yes, uh, yes, I am. And and we were thinking that's a really cool building. <laughs> yes, uh, open wood panels and uh, and so on. Uh, let me just do a little. Let me do that. So it's it's like this. Yep. Yeah, very nice. So uh, if if you noticed, we have this. Um, uh, I bring every badge from uh, every conference I go to. Mm -hmm. 
and they put it on the ceiling, so uh, it's like scalps. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I'm there. Oh, that's good. You're going to be going to MLearn, correct? Um, yes, hopefully. We uh, have just started uh, um, you know, spending our marketing budget on uh, going to various exhibitions. Before that, we uh, were selling and marketing our tool largely through either content uh, or through what we call evangelists. Well, mm -hmm. essentially, it's just people who saw BrainStruck. Uh, they were one of the first people to see it, and uh, they liked it, and uh, uh, they used the power that they have uh, to, to help us uh, bring it to more people because uh, we think that uh, we are working for a very good cause of making e-learning less boring mm -hmm. and more meaningful and more impactful and uh, simply more fun. So. Uh, there's there's a lot of people who uh, kind of share this idea, so they help us bring the good word of branch track to, to other people. I could name a few. There's, uh, for example, Kathy Moore, who is a, a great blogger and a great person. Uh, she writes a lot about uh, action mapping and uh, uh, her articles on how to make learning more impactful and mm -hmm. uh, uh, all, all the idea of learning by doing as opposed to just learning by sitting in front of PC and reading stuff. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really great stuff. So if you go to uh, Google and find Kathy Moore uh, and, and her blog, uh, you'll find a lot of great tips on how to build better training. And uh, she's one of those people who uh, speaks a lot of different conferences, and uh, she uses Benchtrack in uh, her own training courses. That's great. So uh, there are quite a few other people uh, who do that, but uh, that's obviously great if you if you want to recruit early adopters like yourself, for example. But uh, for the larger impact, we will be going to conferences. So uh, watch out if you see me at the conference. Stop and head and say hello. Yep. Yep, definitely do that. So hopefully, I'm, I won't be going to MLearn this year, but uh, we wish you luck at the show. It's actually a pretty good show, um, and it's a newer show, so the people are a little more excited, they're more dynamic, and they're looking at different solutions. And again, you have one that's already built for it because it's HTML-based, so that, that automatically saves a lot of time and effort. Well, it kind of qualifies us. Uh, what's, uh, what's the best show in the United States to go to, what do you think? Uh, it's probably DevLearn. Learn. In terms of developers, that, that one I think had almost 3,000, 2,800 people last year. It's a pretty big show. Uh, oh. That's probably the most fun one in terms of it, it's a big expo. Uh, there's a lot of atten attendees. So that's, that's probably the biggest one. There are bigger shows like ICE, but that's different. And that's not really e-learning focused. It tends to be more training focused teachers. Yeah. So yes. it's a little bit different. It's, it's not that good a show for e-learning people. I know I've worked that show quite a few times, and it's it's okay. It's okay. It's not great. Uh, so I'd say DevLearn is probably your best bet. It, the biggest audience and um, just a lot of flexibility there, and people are looking for solutions. Oh, well, uh, the best show I've been to was actually the Lectoria User Conference. I know mm -hmm. it's small and it's uh, kind mm -hmm. of, um, it's it's almost like a family gathering. Everyone's yeah, and that's nice too because then people are focused exactly on what the tool does, and and those so those are very good shows. Um, um, there are some uh, really great people who who build exciting stuff, and they uh, are not afraid to share it. Uh, I always value people who uh, can actually share what they've built, uh, as opposed to you know hiding behind corporate rules and so on. Right. Uh, people find ways to kind of. Uh, mm -hmm maybe remove a logo and then put it out there for others to see and learn from. Um, so uh, going to these conferences uh, is, is really great when you have that stuff going on. And Lectura user conference is uh, one of those kind of shows. Yep. Well, there you have it. You can meet Sergey in person at one of these shows or reach out to him at www.branchtrack.com and, uh, and you'll be probably as impressed as we were. We were pretty excited when we saw the product and Sergey gives a very good demo and we even had him talk to one of our customers, and this is not a person who who gets excited pretty easily. He was excited by this, so um, this is this is good. And uh, we wish you the best of luck, and thank you today very much for coming on the show, especially that late your time. So I know it is on the late side, and you've been traveling a lot this week. So we appreciate your efforts on that, and. Um, 
That's about it. Any pleasure. other any other thing, Sergey? No, the, the pleasure is absolutely mine. I, I I really appreciate you inviting me on the show, and uh, it's kind of cool to be on the second episode of the yeah. Music to My Life. I'm really excited. Yeah, it's kind of fun. A lot, lot more coming. We've got a lot whole mess of people lined up, so this will this will be good. And uh, if you're watching the show, please subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button. You can hit the thumbs down if you like too, but we prefer the other one. It looks nicer. And um, and we will see you next week on Lectora Live, your inside track into Lectora. Take care, everyone. Thanks a lot for being here, Sergey. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay.